Kitchen Nightmares, Equestrian Misadventures Chapter 5, A Royal Kitchen Nightmare Part 1. The two-hour train ride to Cantalat went by smoothly without a hitch. Gordon thoroughly enjoyed gazing upon the open countryside of Equestria outside the window of the train car. It reminded him of his many leisurely drives through the hillsides of the UK. The color scheme of the train was a little too pink and sugary for his taste, but it was comfortable enough despite being built primarily for people of an equine build. The only big drawback to the train was that the ceiling of the train car just barely gave him enough room to stand up. Everything was just sized slightly smaller than the human man was used to. Other than that, ponies and humans thoroughly enjoyed each other's company, sharing stories about each other's worlds. Unfortunately, Applejack had to constantly keep her eyes and lasso on Pinky to keep her appetite from devouring the entire snack trolley that ran up and down the length of the train. Fluttershy and Rarity were spending their time conversing with Gordon's team about the various exotic locations they had been on to Earth with Gordon, whereas Twilight and Spike were busy reading and going over lists next to Gordon on his train seat. Before long, the city of Cantalot came into view and they circled their way up to Mount Cancer, up towards the city. The train then began to gradually slow down as they approached Cantalot Grand's central station. Soon, it came to a screeching halt as they finally arrived. Oh, uh, we're here! Twilight stated as she sent her long lists away with a puff of purple smoke. Come on, everyone, let's go! They disembarked from the train and found many ponies and a few other species boarding and disembarking from their trains as usual. A group of tall bipedal humans at the moment were the least of their worries, as they were too busy going about their business to even care. Well, I suppose crowded train stations and airports are a constant in a lot of different places, Gordon mused. Oh, you have no idea, Mr. Ramsey, Rarity dryly remarked. You should see it during the solstice celebrations here four times a year, Spike added. Even the Wonderbolts have a hard time getting through here. Rainbow agreed as she looked up. The space above them seemed to be occupied with flying ponies and what appeared to be griffins in all shapes and sizes. I just wonder how you're able to get to this Cantalot castle in all of this shit heap of a mess. Gordon wondered as he crossed his arms. I sure hope it isn't like this throughout the whole city or getting to that castle might become nasty. Well, I'm hoping my presence here will help you avoid that, Chef Ramsay. A heavenly voice stated from off the side. Huh? Gordon turned around to face a large snow white horse with long flowing hair of many vibrant colors, a long horn that protruded from her forehead like a spear, and a pair of elegant wings folded neatly at her sides. The one thing that confirmed Gordon's suspicions about this white large horse was the golden necklace and crown adorning her body. Plus, a pair of guards and gilded golden armor and intimidating lances were accompanying her. Princess Celestia, I presume? He slightly bowed in respect. Welcome, Gordon Ramsay, she said kindly as she bowed back. It is good that you've all made it here in Cantalot. I'm glad to see that you've made it back to Equestria safely. Twilight trotted up to her old teacher and they sweetly embraced each other. It's nice to be back, Princess, Twilight replied. But why are you here? I thought I'd come to meet you this time. I do like to get out of the castle from time to time, anyways, Celestia admitted. Plus, Luna is handling, uh, a bit of a surprise for all of you, while also handling most of my day court responsibilities for the hour. She was very insistent on doing so. Are you here to escort us to the castle, Princess? Rarity asked. Not immediately, Rarity, Celestia said mischievously. I figured that we could take the scenic route through the city, back to the castle, to allow Luna ample time to complete her little surprise for, well, all of you. Oh wait, a surprise? Oh yes! I can't wait to see what it is! Pinky exclaimed. Well then, lead on, your highness. Gordon replied. Princess Celestia escorted the group through the city, right down the main roads, with the intent on allowing the citizens of her capital city to get used to seeing the group of humans. Unfortunately for her, all that did was earn them a lot of upturned noses and hushed jeers coming from a sizable number of Cantalot elite. Most of the middle-class citizens of Cantalot, however, allowed their curiosity to take hold as they approached the group to observe them, but they still kept their distance. After a few miles going on, Celestia guided them down a narrow side street where all of the buildings seemed to be geometrically and architecturally uniform in appearance, each with a hanging wooden sign stamped with three hoofprints. The group was confused when Rarity and Pinkie Pie immediately groaned in annoyance just from the sight of the street. Uh, Princess, I don't know too much about your city, but isn't your castle all the way over there? Gordon questioned. And why are we going down Restaurant Row? Twilight asked. All in good time, you two, Celestia replied calmly. I simply wish to show you the first official project in fixing the many culinary establishments in Equestria. Ah! Oh, 
Fixing these restaurants with Gordy is not gonna be fun. Pinky groaned. I concur. Rarity agreed. Gourmand is stubborn, insulting, and prideful beyond all hope, princess. Not to mention snooty, Pinky complained. And that glare, uh Pinky shivered. Gourmand? Gordon asked, clearly confused. A zesty gourmand, Twilight replied. It's a little too complicated to fully explain right now, but let's just say a certain magical source sent Rarity and Pinky to help one of the restaurant owners around here that was dealing with a family problem. Or a friendship problem, as I like to call them. I believe that they said it was a Marwarian restaurant called the Tasty Treat. It didn't really change according to what Zesty claimed was perfect cuisine, and she gave them zero hoof stamps. Um, hoof stamps? Gordon asked. Do you see those hoof stamps on the signs? When Gordon nodded, she continued her explanation. Zesty is a restaurant critic that rates each of the restaurants with a certain number of hoof stamps on each sign that she placed on every restaurant here. Much like the star rating system I believe Earth uses, if I'm not mistaken. More or less what America and England uses, but I think I can follow. However, I have to ask, is this Zesty Gourmand the only critic in Cancelot? Cause trusting the word of only one person, uh, uh, Pony, is very dangerous in the restaurant business. That's why we have thousands of different people rating food back in America. It gives multiple reviews on certain restaurants and allows people to make their own decisions. Unfortunately, yes. Celeste confirmed, sounding disheartened. From what I've been told, most of the professional health inspectors and food critics that were once based here in Acantalot were pulled to the other major cities around Equestria like Van Hoover, Manhattan, and San Palomino by other agencies. Um, forgive me if I'm being rather cross, but I don't buy that, Princess. That sounds awfully suspicious, Gordon said. Agencies from specific cities just don't give up their health inspectors to other cities. All the more reason you and Twilight are here to help investigate this Gordon Ramsay. My sister and I are everywhere at once, and it doesn't help in the slightest that we have to deal with all of our daily royal duties, along with trying to properly manage this mysterious famine. On top of all that, I can't shake the feeling that many of my little ponies have been lying to me about the state of my city. Well, I'm not magical, but... Well, I'll see what I can do to help, Gordon replied confidently. I'll see what I can do about this zesty gourmand, and after this, Feastia's sister had been kind enough to put this together. Afterwards, Celestia circled back around and guided the group down the correct path and towards the castle. Soon the group finally made it to the castle where the doors were immediately pulled open as soon as Celestia approached. The moment they stepped through the front doors of the castle, all of the sound and commotion of Cantalot was replaced entirely with an unsettling silence throughout the castle. While Gordon and his team were marveling at the sheer size and scale of Celestia's home, the princess in question was rolling her eyes and sighing in vague irritation at what was to come in a few short minutes. When they finally made their way to the throne room after walking for what seemed like 15 minutes down the long hallway, they were greeted with a large table that stretched from one end of the throne room to the other, covered in various assortments of food and a certain princess of the night waiting for them right in front of it. Greetings, dear friends, and greetings, Great Ramsey! Luna bellowed with delight. She then galloped up to Gordon and proceeded to bellow directly to his face. We welcome thee to our world, Great One, with a royal feast for your break of fast. Hot damn! Gordon shouted as he grabbed his ears. I think you burst my damn eardrums! Are you alright there, Pally? Applejack asked, concerned. Oh dear, I was afraid of this. Celestia lamented. Luna, please, lower your voice and don't scream into our guest's ear. You could have heard him! What was that? Oh god, I think my ears are bleeding! <laughs> looks like she already did. Rainbow snickered. Now he knows how I felt last Nightmare Night. Celestia silenced Rainbow with just a look. Oh my goodness! Luna exclaimed sadly. We are sorry, dear Ramsey. We did not intend to bring harm to thou. What was that? Oh good fucking lord, I think my eardrums have burst! Why did you do that? Luna! Celestia said condescendingly. What did we say about using the Cantalot voice? Only use it from a distance, she muttered in a really output manner. That's right. Now, can you please try to refrain from using your Cantalot voice? I understand. You want to welcome him, but we can't hurt him. Very well, she simply replied. Allow me to at least tend to his injuries that I unjustly caused upon him. Luna's horn glowed blue and two balls of blue light engulfed Gordon's ears. He wasn't really sure what happened, but as soon as Gordon heard the princess speak, he thought a bomb had gone off. 
which caused him to grab his ears in pain. The princesses seemed to be saying something, but he couldn't make it out. Then, all of a sudden, the princess's horn glowed and he felt soothing warmth go into his ears and a tingle around his head. Suddenly, he was able to hear once again. Are thou alright now, great Ramsey? Luna asked with concern as she extended a hoof to help him up onto his feet. Ugh, peachy, Gordon replied dryly. That's one way to make introductions, I suppose. We are terribly sorry for shouting in your ear. We became too excited. Well, at least she's courteous, he thought. I guess first impressions aren't everything. No permanent harm done, thankfully, he replied. Didn't the same thing nearly happen to you in Nightmare Night Twilight? Applejack snickered. Heh, <laughs> good thing my star swirl hat was in the way, Twilight replied. Luna briefly gave an embarrassed look and coughed to regain her composure. Um, allow us to properly introduce ourselves. We are Princess Luna, guardian of dreams and ruler of the night, she proclaimed. A pleasure, Princess, Gordon replied as he shook her hoof. Now that we have our introductions out of the way, why don't we get started with this feast you took the time to put together for? Celestia asked. With that, Luna directed each member of the rather large group to their own seats at the table. To his confusion, Celestia insisted that Gordon sat in the seat next to her at one of the ends of the table as Luna began to call out the other servants. The servant ponies that came out were visibly shaken and nervous about something. They were sweating profusely as they carried trays covered in what appeared to be plates of strangely colored food. As they placed the plates down onto the table, they quickly scurried off back to where they came from. Gordon raised his eyebrows as he was unable to tell what they were just serving. What was on the plate nearest to him was a gray blob overfilled to the brim with cheese. Various black specks were sprinkled all over the thing. Oh, lord! He said in shock as he cautiously poked the entree. What? What is this? I believe that would be the dishes you personally made, Luna? Celestia guessed. You are correct, dear sister. Gordon Ramsay, we have seen the videos of the exploits in the culinary world that have inspired us to chase our hobby of cooking in the modern era. Our first break of fast dish that we have made for Thou is something we believe Thou in America call an omelette. He stared at the dish and then back at her for a solid moment with a blank expression before he finally spoke. Well, I can tell you one thing, Princess, Gordon slowly replied. And what might that be, Gordon Ramsay? Luna asked, excited for his answer. It's absolute shit! It's like food you would feed a Sua crocodile! Absolutely everyone in the room went completely silent in disbelief as they were unable to process what he just said to one of their princesses. A pin could almost be heard dropping to the floor. Twilight and the rest of her friends widened their eyes in terror at what they dreaded was about to come next. You dare to mock our creations?! She screamed in her cantalot voice. Oh dear, now it begins. Celestia lamented.